Yep. All right. So, <laughs> ah, your boy Boss Cowboy was able to listen to the Jerry Jones interview. Oh my. Oh my. Yeah. We got to talk about that one. He was actually in his interview as I was live yesterday. So, God dog, I wish I would have just waited. Because I would address this. Um, but I'm going to just tell you, it's it's bad. It's real bad. It's bad for our future. There's some solutions. It ain't just the end of the world because it's always a ray of hope. <laughs> By the name of Will McClay, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that now. If it wasn't for Will McClay, man, Will, we would be the Browns with the way this organization takes care of its, its personnel decisions. It's in a way that it, to me, just frankly wastes their talent. And not even just waste, how they treat their players. You know, we the only organization that think it's smart to use the public as leverage when it comes down to the contracts. And, the, and they do it to their biggest and their best players. The guys that you want to be the leaders of the team is the guys that's in the offseason that's free game to be attacked with no mercy. A lot of stuff even exaggerated. Because the days when they were saying Dak wanted 40 million, he didn't want it until the market changed to the point to where 40 million was the new market point. But they not gonna say that. Not like I just said it. But yeah, I mean the Cowboys, we all who we are. Uh, let's just, it's time to just accept the reality that us as fans who love this team, uh, we are in a dysfunctional relationship. We are in love with a toxic relationship. That's what we are. But that don't mean we stop loving who we love. And we not gonna stop loving who we love because we love who we love. We love the Cowboys. But at the same time, we just gotta be honest, you know? And then we gotta, you know, call it out, put it out. And then hopefully, with our voices being loud enough, solutions might come from it. That's what we can pray for and hope for. So as always, I'm in the background working on the Millennial Falcon. So y'all just sit put as we get it going. Be right back. to the sauce because I got all the sauce and you know we go talk about this you know about what's really going on uh, because you know I broke down the interview and I do know that um, one of the gifts that I have is dissecting the tea leaves of the organization and pretty accurately that's not to brag but that's just a gift it's, it's from years of corporate experience where you work for corporate organizations so you and being the type of person that's observant on patterns that's the type of person i am uh okoye is the same way we talked about that you know just you know everybody don't have that skill set to be able to dissect and put together the patterns and then forecast into the future based on what you see that's a skill that's usually developed over like my boy okoye acronym years of experience so you know, the years of experience that you hear from the OC, the years of experience that you hear from Boss Cowboy Sports is why we able to, a lot of times, predict what's gonna happen. It, 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 we, none of us are Socrates, none of us are prophets, uh, but all of us seem to predict very accurately what's gonna happen. So before we get into this content, as always, we gonna say hello to the people, and we also wanna, you know, for new subscribers and because we getting a lot of new subscribers we had over 300 subscribers in a, in about a week so that's super fast pace 
Uh, that's explosive growth. Um, you know, and if we continue that way, we go hit some big numbers by this time next year. Uh, I think the people registered with Boss Cowboy Sports in the spirit of how we kind of address content. So Dale Prime, what's up, boy? He said, what's up? He said, salute to the chat. Man, thank you for saying what's up to me in the chat, my boy Dale Prime. And then Bear24, he said, I was watching your video from yesterday again. Salute, boss. Yeah, some of those take two looks. I'm glad you looked at it twice. Uh, some of them do take two looks to where you really, really got to kind of go through it sometimes and digest it. Uh, my boy Keystone in the house. Keystone, it's time for us to get to work. Obviously, we got to get on them phones, big dog. <laughs> we got to get on them phones. Um, and let's let's start coordinating all our content that we got to put out there for the draft and free agency, bro. You know it's time to go. No days off. Uh, then we got Steven White. And Steven White say, hi, y'all. What's up, man? Thanks for coming in, as always, man. I'm seeing a lot of you boys. Uh... My boy say load in the bowl, fire. <laughs> and then conspiracy talk. He said, uh, good day, boss cowboy. What's going on, bro? And then B Bird. B Bird, what's Coach Bird? Uh, I want to respect Coach. He, uh, <laughs> ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, see, and this is happening a lot, what B Bird just said. He said, love them, but can leave them. See, it's a reason why people saying stuff like that. It's because it's not just we losing, it's that we feel like we getting played. All of us would go down with the ship if we just lost based on the, they just beat us. But when you keep seeing the same old stuff that you feel like you've been seeing from years, it's almost like being in a relationship. It's like at some point, my dignity feel like it's that question. Even by messing with you, little mama, cause I'm trying to work it out with you, but you are a little bit too toxic. These ain't just, you know, these ain't just mishaps of a typical relationships. You trying to play me. And when anybody feel like they being played, man, they go act like my boy Coach Bird. I had no problems with that. I had no problems if some of our fans walk away. That don't mean you disloyal. I mean, it just is sometimes, man, nobody want to feel like that funk. And then I do see something about Charles Haley for Mark Anthony. That's going to be bonus content uh, that I'm going to talk about at the end. I already got that queued up, um, the content on Charles Haley. So I'm going to definitely talk about that. But y'all got to stay to the end on that. I'm not going to attack that first. I'm going to attack, obviously, the Jerry Jones interview and the exit interview because that's, that's the topic of the content. And, you know, you can see by my face on this thumbnail that it's, I'm annoyed. It's, it's like... Cause it's it's almost like we so close and we so good because i ain't gonna lie i've been in my share of toxic relationships <laughs> i've been in my share of toxic relationships and some of y'all can relate to this some of y'all not but some of the worst things about being in a toxic relationship with somebody that you love is a lot of times y'all relationship could be solved if people didn't have so much pride and it's usually little things that's throwing y'all off. Like can't listen, um, not respecting each other. Just simple stuff. And it's like, we got the whole ingredients to make this relationship work, but we don't have the soft skills to make this work. You know, so I gotta go. I gotta get out of this because it's not changing. Because it definitely takes two people to make a relationship work. And a lot of us are definitely coming to the conclusion that this is a one-sided relationship because we given our loyalty. We given our loyalty, win or lose, four and 12, 13 and three, we showing up. Four and 12, look, the season just ended and my number's better than ever. And, and my boy Anderson, Anderson, I know, see, I'm hitting this on the head. Look what my boy Anderson Anderson said. He said, played is exactly the word. Uh, that's how we feel this is not just about oh we lost this is about why we lost and we seeing the same old stuff man and then uh we got us a side question and i'm gonna address this one before we get into the content he said boss you think dan quinn would be a better coach than mike mccarthy if jerry makes him keep kelly moore's oc um i'm gonna be honest with you man no no. Matter of fact, I'm going to be all the way honest with you. 
Dan Quinn is not better than Mike McCarthy as a head coach. See, and this is the truth about all of them. It don't matter who the head coach is. It don't matter who the head coach is. Whoever they put in there, man, they run the risk of them being unsullied. And so we talked about that from Game of Thrones. Just to break that down again for those who don't know about the show, the Unsullied was the Warriors that was the best Warriors. Just like huh, Dan Quinn is a good Warrior and Mike McCarthy was a good Warrior. He the one that got a ring. Dan Quinn ain't never got no ring at the head at, and at the helm. But when you got, when, when, when Jerry Jones come at these guys with these old package deals, like, hey man, I'm gonna hire you, but also under the condition that you also gotta deal with my guy, Kellen Moore. Well, that in itself is cutting the balls off your leader, making them powerless. And see the unsell Sully, the background of them in the Game of Thrones, they was a they was cold. They was they could fight. But what made them fighters the way that they did also, because they started as slaves, what made them the type of fighters also that they were was that when they was born, they would have their private parts cut off so that they could only focus on war and concentrating and preparing for battle. So, so no, don't we can't fool ourselves anymore just being all the way honest that playing ring around the rosy with coaches is the solution. It's not gonna help us with Sean Payton. It's not gonna help us with, listen, we had one of the best coaches you will ever have, man, with Bill Parcells. Bill Parcells is what started the legendary coaching tree and he didn't work. So Bill Pelichick came from Bill Parcells under the Giants. He was the little brother to the big tuna and that didn't work so at some point we just got to accept the fact that no nobody go work with meddling you got to empower your coaches you got to give them the authority even over to a degree your payroll what you mean by that boss see because everybody talking about discipline right but see jimmy had the authority to cut and fire players you're not cutting and firing no players in this this current uh, organization in Dallas it's not happening because the guy that's over the budget go question you and go line by line is is that make sense should we do that so you can't even make the spontaneous decisions that you need to make to sometimes shake up your team and enforce discipline so <laughs> I just sent the OC the link so he should be showing up too uh, in a second but um yeah so yeah, I just want to answer that question before we get into this content. Y'all give me one second, I just set up something. Give me one second. Cause this is definitely true. What Law said, we always flying these planes while they in our, it's just how it go. If you ever get into this business, you gonna definitely have to learn some multitasking. <laughs> Cause you gotta multitask to be, uh, to me a real good uh, podcaster, you do. So, and that's what it is, man. So I just want to kind of address that before we get into the content. So before we get into the content, I do want to also show y'all a warning, a real warning that I had. And then we go talk about the warning. And then we go go right into Jerry. And then we go also then conclude this talking about, um, we go also conclude this talking about Haley because it's really important. So let's start with, um, something that I said back on September 3rd where I was referencing something else that I said from December 24th. So from January, I'm sorry, January 3rd, I, I was talking about something that I predicted from December 24th. So I want y'all to listen to this and then we go catch this all the way up to where we are now. All right. All right. So y'all listen. Yeah, every now and then you can win with a team of people that play together. But the real facts is that you win this game with your stars.
and I'm going to play this because this is the one thing that I fear. OK, because I do have a fear. OK, and I'm still looking at y'all comments, man. I'm going to take some of y'all comments. All right. I'm still looking at it, but I'm going to conclude Listen, because I have a sneaky suspicion that I something's coming down a, the pipe. I said I, want I have a sneaky suspicion that something is coming down the pipe. Y'all listen. Listen. I said I have a sneaky suspicion. Listen. Um, asking a question that got us what we're looking for. My final word is I hope this doesn't become what's historically ugly with the Cowboys. Because this wasn't the first time we've seen receivers speak out right now i just hope it don't get nasty i hope this doesn't become the t-o thing mm. or the des Bryant thing mm. to where because they speaking out against the dysfunctions like when t-o talked about wrong now remember this was before we played the washington football team this was the 24th of december Romo and Witten, he was gone. Once he said Romo and Witten making up plays for each other, he was out because you're, you, you're considered a distraction, even though you're telling the truth. Once Dez came out and told the truth on play calling, he was gone. It didn't matter that he said it nice. He was out of here. And see, I'm showing Jane Slater's tweet. Where she was just keeping it real. She was telling the whole world. It's no drama in the locker room. Like people keep saying, it's no drama. She doing her best. To no effect. To no effect. It was already in motion. They was getting ready to get rid of him. Once he came out. So I just hope we don't OC do the things that we've done in the past. To where we look at the person that's telling you the truth as the bad guy and then target them and then figure out later oh you was right scott linehan was predictable but they've already fired this it's already he's already gone you know what i mean i'm hoping it don't spin into that and i'm hoping it goes right into what you said oc which is they gonna hopefully take it as yeah he's ready let's target him let's get him going keep in mind that was before the Washington game and I was saying I hope they target him and what happened when we did we blew them out yeah I don't I don't think that it's gonna go toxic balls because I think it's a different regime yeah and I think that you know it's not it, it's not a good old boy culture nearly as much as it used to be the former try to like get W's and do what we need to do as a team and so that that's my prediction on this yeah let me um break that down because the oc system was breaking situation up. and amari cooper is a he was saying i don't see the team culture being toxic like it used to be so that it broke up when he said that but that's a very important part because the oc is here now so we're gonna be able to pick up on that um on what he says but let's continue a high character guy he's not messy he's not loud he's not flamboyant so he's a guy that's respected and i think he has to respect or at least enough respect of the locker room for that not to take place see keep your eyes open oc i said keep your eyes open oc it's like my boy da lee said the fan base is already doing that to coop in these groups you know what i mean where basically the fans are yep. targeting Coop. And see, when that happens, it makes it easy for the Joneses to do dirty work. Y'all heard that? Y'all heard that? So you can't do no That's dirty true. work. You can't do no dirty work on Tank right now. You can't. You just got to shut up. Yeah, you you know what I mean? No dirty work. But you can do dirty work on Coop yep. right now. So it's something... That to me we got to look out for in my opinion big bro uh um ask yeah man hold on real quick i still got some more i thought i was finished hold on we got the oc though what's up man what's up big bro how you doing good let me uh finish this then we go talk about that because we go then kind of fast forward to now bro bro <laughs> yeah and then we go get into it let me finish it though listen i'm concerned about that I'm concerned about that because see 
I'm very, very y'all can see, especially if you look at those those times um where you go back three years, me and West Coast, we've been on the top of this for years. Like we've been on top of this, not like halfway paying attention. We've been deep in the weed, so we know the patterns. We know them intimately. And this is the real pattern of the Dallas Cowboys. I'm gonna tell you the truth. The pattern is they fire the players before they fire the coaches. Even when the players are telling the truth, they let the players go on and they call them toxic. Mm -hmm. Even when those players are telling them the truth out of passion, do you really think people went to James Slater to be messy? This is January 3rd. Do you really think they went to her to talk about the dysfunction of the team because they was just trying to stir up chaos? No. When guys really want to win, they will go to any outlet that's going to make change. What we always normally do is we normally first try to talk to you. But if you ignore me, then I got to take action somewhere else. If you listen close to Cooper when he was talking to 105.3 The Fan. Y'all hear me on this. Cooper said, I know during the week if I'm going to be in the game based on how practice is going. In other words, he's saying, I see early that y'all gonna phase me out. You are never dealing with no dummy when you're dealing with Amari Cooper. That's a very cerebral man. He's very smart. No dummy at all. Where other people would be like, oh, they didn't give me any targets at practice, but they're gonna target me in the game. He was like, nah, I see the pattern. If y'all don't target me during the week, y'all have no plans of using me in the game. That's why he spoke up. And he's saying, I'm seeing y'all trying to phase me out. And it's bet not be over trying to replace me with no CeeDee Lamb. Because let me tell y'all something. CeeDee Lamb is up and coming, but he is definitely not Amari Cooper yet. Not at all. And we need Amari Cooper now. Amari Cooper is our number one. And he's literally being treated like he's just a receiver. So I'm also keeping my own. Y'all better not be trying to fire this dude in the offseason. Mm. Because y'all better remember this. Amari Cooper got a thousand yards with backup quarterbacks. Mm. Mm. With backup quarterbacks last year. Noodle arms. Weak guys. No talent. You can literally throw it in cooper's direction he go still make plays rush prove that mj yeah what's up oc what you got on that big dog man what, what what's the word man hey hashtag straight business hey listen i gotta i gotta say this and jump off boss and i'll be back but listen at the end of the day here's the conundrum we have to really bring tape into this situation once again boss cowboy prove it by the tape to see truly and actually we did a little bit of this before actually to prove that amari cooper is getting separation that amari cooper is in fact getting open to to juxtapose the lying narrative about him being open at the top of his routes like kellen moore said at the conference yep. after the washington football team game and who's the real issue here? Is it the fact that we don't follow the pattern? Because Jerry Jones spoke to a patterns about number ones beating double teams, number ones, you know, catching it when it's tight coverage. Well, also number ones are targeted. So if you bring that up in one sense, being the owner, and that's the narrative that you spin, then you have to be consistent across the board with the whole narrative. So. You have to be able to go back to what Boss Cowboy did yesterday about the interview and listen to what Jerry Jones said. If you can, if you you want him to be double teams, he does. You want him to catch the ball in tight windows, he does. Okay, then you also have to give him the targets 
of a number one receiver if you're going to compare him mathematically and performance-wise to all these other guys. Doesn't that make sense? Totally. And before you go, see, yeah. th this is the thing, because I'm going to play what he said, and I'm going to dissect it when you leave. But since we're talking about it, we can talk about it. So yep. we was talking about toxic relationships at the beginning of the show, right? And all of us have had some type of toxic relationship. One thing when it's real obvious that you're in a toxic relationship, when the other person will never debate you in good faith. See, I want you to notice the back and forth that the me and the OC had that time we was going back and forth. And I said, keep your eyes open, OC. Did the OC get defensive? Did he say, no, 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 I'm right. I'm going to stick to my point. He was listening. He was actively listening. He heard my whole case. And he actually pivoted at the end. Because that's not a toxic listener that's trying to be right. He was like, okay, I can see your case. You know what I'm saying? So yep. that's what you getting with Jerry. Why did I bring that up? Because it's a bad faith argument to make unrealistic expectations. Let's just look at it Real real quick. Y'all can hear that OC if you can if you can turn that down. Oh, sorry about that. It's all good. Sorry about that, bro. It's coming through loud. But see, one of the things that Jerry said is that um hold on. And we go play the whole thing. He said, he said, but in the, in the halfway point of the highlight, he said, but, um, but how he fits in, he should take up half the field with him when he gets, when, when he goes and runs the field, not half. That's an exaggeration, of course, but a whole bunch of that defense should have to honor Cooper. <laughs> See, I'm going to say this before I go, boss cowboy. You you know what that is, right? You already know what this is, right? That's somebody. See, that. See that's your manager muddying up your name to that's the CEO. That's your manager. Ooh. That's what that is. Come on. Come that's on, your see. manager muddying up your name to the CEO. Straight business. I ain't mean, playing Straight this game. Straight business. See, political nonsense about this boy not being a great receiver because he ain't your favorite it all plays into the master plan of wanting to try to focus on cd lamb which you did by in part until he had two or three bad games we didn't catch the ball we underperformed where he wasn't getting open he wasn't getting open he wasn't getting open we'll look at the tape i'll break down the tape this boy wasn't getting open. And now amari cooper complains hey we start losing games now everybody has an issue now but the truth is, the pattern of success came from running the ball and play action pass and targeting Amari Cooper one on one, mixing in CD Lamb for some big plays. And that was the recipe that got the Cowboys up six games to one or two. That was the recipe. That so don't recipe. come with all this malarkey, this straight, hot, smoldering malarkey. All right, let, let's slow you down real quick. Whenever you gotta go, just leave, big dog. <laughs> I am. I am in a minute. I got. I got like two minutes. <laughs> I'll be back though. I'll be back. I'll be back in a flash. Oh, I. Right, I'm gonna play this. Just go ahead and leave, bro. I got you. Just come on back, whatever. Okay, I got you. Cause this is gonna uh, take right. a little while. I gotta right. set up this point. This point gonna take a second right. to kind of cultivate. See, the OC. This is the thing about the OC when he talking um, straight business the way that he does. All right. When he talking straight business, he talks so fast with his corporate experience. A lot of stuff can really kind of go over our head. And so what he said was, and I heard it real clear. <laughs> that boy OC said, that sound like Jerry has been persuaded by management. See, we talking in corporate terms because we live that life. You know, obviously before we was entrepreneurs, we had to pay our dues in the corporate environments and dallas cowboys is very corporate -y. it's very my guys and, and let me let me let me prove that i'm gonna prove that i want y'all to really hear me out see because there's no way all of us was predicting this by accident i want in my tweet january 5th because i because i just don't talk about x's and o's y'all man i talk about everything 
On January 5th, I said, before we jump to calling Cooper selfish claims for having the common sense to want more targets to win, let's remember in the last four years that the players were right regarding Scott Linehan and Mike Nolan issues, but was fired first. So what does that mean? That mean Jerry and Steven have a tendency to take their coach's side and investigate what the coaches is claiming over what the players are claiming. And then after they get rid of the players, then the last people usually standing is the coaches who now got to live on the product of what they sold. And when that falls apart, then you end up firing them. But you've also lost the player as well. In the case of Dez, in the, like Brandon Carr. Now, Brandon Carr was good enough to be man of the year for the NFL, but all of a sudden he under Mike Nolan and he's considered toxic. Now, what Brandon Carr really was, was an alpha man who wanted to win and who had the, the stone and the nuts to actually confront coaches on dumb ideas. But what happened is these guys, that's why I called it. Y'all need to listen to me. Y'all really need to listen to me. That's why I call this stuff Game of Thrones. Because you got to really understand, this is not little stuff that these guys are fighting about. If your player is calling out a coach, that coach is not just looking at it like I can lose my job. Think about it. That coach is actually thinking I can lose millions. Even if you write. So let's go look at, because that's why I told it, OC, it was going to take a little, little while for me to kind of set up the evidence of what he just said. But we got the evidence here. All we got to do is just listen and pay attention. Just really listen and pay attention, and you will clearly see what's going on. So y'all listen to Mr. Kellen Moore. Uh, I'm already talking to us last week and expressed some frustration, just wanting to get the ball. Obviously, they all want the ball. Was there a concerted effort? on your part to give him more opportunities than in previous games, or that's just the way it went? So he got a direct question. He was asked directly, was he complained, was it intentional, or was it just coincidental that he ended up getting the targets? And remember, this was after the Washington game where he went off. He destroyed that game. Let's listen to Mr. Corporate EO, Mr. Uh, Kent, the Trojan horse. Let's listen. I think certainly it's, it's the way it went. Uh, oh, so you didn't intentionally target him. It just, that's the way it went. Now, this is getting ready to go into the OC's point when he talks about Jerry listening to his managers over his players. Listen, listen. Obviously, we, we love getting the ball to Amari as much as we can. Uh, felt like there were some great opportunities in this particular game. Uh, Amari did a great job of, uh, you know, sp especially early in the game, just being available, being open, doing a great job of getting his depth on, on particular routes. And oh, okay, so that's why he got the ball. He got the ball because this particular game, he did a good job of getting open, and especially early in the game, getting to the top of his route. See, this is, this is an indication of how he's selling Jerry. See, I want y'all to peep that. This is politics. This is typical corporate America BS where the owner or the president of the company got a manager that's in place, but the guy that's really making it happen. Okay, I could talk about this from a sales standpoint because this happens all the time because I was in sales. I was the number one salesperson in the country. But then a lot of times you have channels of leadership, right? And what are happen in those channels is they try to respect those channels, right? So... They don't usually override their managers unless you're exceptional. But see, then you listen and what he's really saying is this particular game, it just so happened that he got the targets because this time he actually earned it because he actually did his job. That's what he's saying. So I felt like we uh, we did a great job of getting in the rhythm there. And, you know, I, I think you always have to be careful of trying to narrow the focus for the core act into one particular guy we feel for. And see, we already exposed that BS, so I ain't gonna even go into it to where he just so damn wrong on that. That's pathetic. Just pathetic. You know what I'm saying? That you got the whole league showing that they know how to target number ones, and he over here, you gotta be careful. And see, what's happening is because Jerry lobbied for these guys, 
Jerry was the one who wanted him in position. Now Jerry has to actually acknowledge I was wrong. And if you are the type of person that struggles with admitting that, that's why you will tear apart everything else except what you actually caused. So that's why it's no coincidence. If you look around the podcast community, if you, my boy, Big Game James, I, I can show this with a whole lot of us that as we were seeing it coming, my boy said it just like I said, he said, and so it begins. Talked about this possibly coming weeks ago. Everybody see it, but what's crazy is nobody really saying it like we saying it. Nobody really just- Yoga, fire, yoga. Claim telling the truth on this, bro. It's a lot of it's a lot of dodging and faking going on. Just being honest, it's a lot of dodging and faking going on. Um. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go play Jerry and his interview. <laughs> I'm gonna play Jerry as he was talking about uh, the Amari Cooper portion. And uh, we go break all this down. All right, so I just want y'all to stay with me as we uh, kind of dive into all of this. So I'm setting it up now. This is one of those things where um, I'm flying or building the plane. I don't know exactly how my boy said, but y'all know what I mean. You know what I mean? But it's one of those things to where it's a nasty thing. And that's why my thumbnail is what it is. It's like, it's almost like, having a brother that's on drugs you know to where you love your brother and they just can't get off the drugs i don't have a brother on drugs i'm just using this as a morbid example it's one of those things to where i love you dallas i jerry i love you man and i'm just watching you destroy what you actually want and it just make you hold your head like god damn like damn and it's like the people that's the most for you is the people you actually fighting. Dez was for you. Carl was for you. Cooper is for you. But because you run in a white collar environment, a political organization, you sometimes get persuaded by the people you shouldn't be persuaded by. So y'all just listen as we get the real breakdown of what's going on. And I want to really just sit back and listen. Let's go. Things now. Things from one year to the next. Uh, we're not going to be dealing with the same uh, situation next year as we dealt with this year. We're certainly not going to be dealing with many of the same players and to some extent the same coaches. We're just not going to. Listen. So, Jerry, specifically, there's two players that have bigger contracts. Do you feel like, and you can break them down in both players here, do you feel like Amari Cooper and Demarcus Lawrence will be on the 2022 Dallas Cowboys? All right. Before he answered that question, remember, I said, remember I said this on January 3rd. I said, you can't touch Tank right now because the muddy, the waters are not muddy on him. But whenever the, the waters are muddy, that gives political people like Jerry and Steven a chance to do dirt. So notice he was asked about Demarcus Lawrence and Cooper. Let's see who he focus on. I don't need to talk uh, to us in an elementary way. Uh, the reason those contracts are being discussed is because they have two sides to them. One's got it coming, and the other one's got to uh, pay it. All right. So, okay, and I want to explain something. I am I'm very much trained in being an active listener. Some people don't know this, but I graduated from the number one sales program in the country. So, like, when you see my ability to be able to really dissect interviews like this that's because i do have a training in doing this this is called active listening where you have to be able to fully break down the context of what somebody is saying 
right? Because I'm gonna just say it, this gonna sound kind of funny, but you can't sell people if you can't even really hear the the real concern. You gotta be so active in your listening to where you can uncover the real concern. So one thing I want you to notice in Jerry breaking this down is he started talking about the contracts being two ways, right? So everything that he talks about now is within that context. Okay. So how he started the context, everything after that is related to contracts being two way streets. And then the one that's got it coming is going to go out and perform usually to the level of the contract. That's the way I think about those contracts. You don't just get up and take contracts or agreements with each other and just decide that because you've had a big effeminate at, uh, at home that you're going to change directions. And one of the things about contracts, you know, uh, uh, we have 10 players that, uh, uh, and this is, comp this is the way it is around the NFL, we have 10 players that get two-thirds of the money. 10 that gets two-thirds of the money. And so you've got a lot of, have a lot of other things that uh, uh, is a thought process when you're sitting here uh, uh, talking about somebody's contract. And no, I don't have any comment on the uh, Cooper's contract. I oh, so you have no comment? So that means you should stop talking if you don't have a comment. But let's see if he really doesn't have a comment. Uh, I thought that uh, the way we were playing early when we did make something happen, I thought Cooper had a big part of it. And I'm not did being trite. But, I, but how how he fits in, uh, he should take half the field with him when he runs around. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> See, remember what I said was everything he's saying after he start talking about contracts being a two-way street is in context to that so all the negative things that he's saying and is going to say is basically saying i don't believe cooper lived up to his end of the agreement because remember that's the context of what he started with that's why he said i don't want to be elementary here so the whole context is about value and are you living up to your part? <laughs> oh my God. This is so funny to watch him do this. Here we go. Oh, half, it, uh, half, uh, not half, that's an exaggeration, of course, but a whole bunch of defense ought to have to. So why did you exaggerate? See, ask yourself. He said Cooper should have brought half the field with him. So you knocking him for stuff that's not even realistic, which that's why I said, and you, if you in a toxic relationship and you debating people that don't really want to get to solutions, they start making up stuff. How many of y'all had people do that to you? Where you trying to work it out with them, an employee that you caught stealing or something. And so instead of owning it and just resigning, they'll go to unemployment and start talking about I was treated wrong at this organization because they arguing in bad faith. They not doing and they not, they're not debating you with the facts. What they're doing is they're debating you because they know they are guilty. So they start making up stuff. When you get in toxic relationships like that, you cannot win. Honor Cooper. He ought, to be able to, he ought to be able to catch it in the middle of when, he's, when they're going with it. Oh, listen to Jerry. He should. He ought to be able to. All of this is in context to the two-way street. He ought to be able to catch it when they're going with him. So the person at the beginning of the season that had the best drop rate was Cooper. <laughs> Man, <laughs> this is so funny to watch this corporate-ass cowboys. He's one of those kind of receivers, that's for sure. Before we let you go, oh, Jerry... Know. And see, I want to say something about KC uh, Masterpiece. I sure wish this was Sean and RJ down because those questions, that, uh, those questions were so, if you, if you, 
He was so ready to move on to his next point that he did not even see that Jerry was antsy to talk negatively about Cooper. You got to fan that flame, Mr. Journalist. You got to make him talk. He trying to get to the next point, nervous because you talking to Jerry Jones. Yeah, that is Amari Cooper. No, what you should say is, wow, Jerry, yeah, so you think he should have took up half the field? What about Cooper is not making that happen? Make him explain it. Oh, that is something about Cooper. Man, damn, we need it. We need to shun an RJ on this. And see, let me tell you, that's why that's that's likely why Jerry rescheduled. Because Sean and RJ, them boys be asking them pointed fire questions. So does Brian Brothers and uh Kavanaugh. So he went to the, the middle market. He went to where those questions was gonna be softball. He went to the rookies. He went to the guys that don't really know how to kick their feet up and walk you down questions that's gonna expose your thoughts. Others, others do. You know the people that are covered all the time in the NFL. You have to. Most people don't have the numbers of the receivers we've had. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we do let you go, were you were you pleased with the job that Dan? Yeah. So when you look at this whole Cooper situation, right? It's it's what the OC said. What we looking at is the Dallas Cowboys is a corporate organization. Okay. And you got Jerry Jones, who's listening to his middle manager, who is Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore has the spirit of Jason Garrett and Scott Linehan, and he learned these traits, these throw under the bus ass traits. The, you know, to where you blaming your receiver for not getting open versus blaming your dumb system. So I am going to talk about a couple of rays of hope that could potentially save us. And the only thing that can really save us is, is, is the fact that we have guys that's accomplished that's speaking out. Because to be honest, I'm saying the exact same thing the playmaker said. I'm saying the exact same thing that we heard from Kurt Warner. I'm saying the exact same thing you heard from Aikman. But who the hell are you? You're a podcaster. But when you got guys that's on the NFL network with a national voice, two of them that so happen to play for you, a third that's highly respected in his opinions on quarterback play, all three, Kirk Warner, Michael Irvin, and Troy Aikman all pointed their finger at one person, Kellen Moore. All of them, that's the only potential saving grace in this whole thing. Cause I want y'all to listen to the playmaker real quick, because I'm telling y'all, this is the only chance we got because it's people that's actually sounding the alarm on this. Yes, it is. But will Jerry listen? Here we go. Listen. Mike, oh, Troy, Troy was talking about, uh, you know, your guy beating your, you know, beating the man on the other side. You know, we're, we're worried too much about scheming guys open. Uh, is it on the receivers? Is it on the coaching to get the receivers the, the ball? Now that's the NFL now, guys. I, I, I've been talking about that for a while. When you see it, and that's why, as we start rating guys, like we want to rate wide receiver. Oh, he's better than him. He's better than him. And we do it on numbers when it's system beating system now. It's not man beating man. That's why they're going to get these so-called boy geniuses. It's you heard him? That's why they go get these so-called. He called them so-called boy geniuses. Listen to it. Listen at the playmaker. Listen. Man, that's why they're going to get these so-called boy geniuses. They try to figure out a way to beat a system, and then I can get less players and come back and beat better players. So, see? See? Listen, I can get less players. This is this is typical corporate America type of thinking, where they're so greedy for profits that they try and they actually turn down the value of their company out of greed. That's why he said they trying to get the because what it is is they saying okay, I'd rather pay Kellen more than to pay Cooper. That's what we dealing with. That's what we dealing with. I'd rather pay Kellen more than Cooper. 
and and they really wanted to work and capitalists corporate america leaders they really ride and die by these ideas that they trying to do to save a dollar this is about jerry and steven trying to be creative to find ways to to win games without paying people and michael irvin said it y'all listen i'm gonna play it again what genius is to try to figure out a way to beat a system and then i can get less players and come back and beat better players because i'm beating a system today is a man beating man uh it's it's it, 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 it will we'll never have them again we'll never have those again and, and and sometimes it takes away from when it's just time to get down dirty and gritty yep i said that way before the playmaker said that i said it january 3rd i was talking about kelly moore and it was after arizona slapped us and that's when i that's when i realized he was he was leaning on the system over playmakers and i made that whole case january 3rd i said it way before the playmaker said it. and the play and this is the thing i said it a little bit different though i said yeah that stuff work when you going against weaker teams oh yeah we can beat you with Dalton Schultz and we can beat you with CD Lamb and we can beat you with the number two guys and we can beat you with Cedric Wilson and then we go develop this inflated confidence like oh this is who we are no you are not who you really are until you face a formidable opponent then when you go against that real opponent that's when you actually really need the guys that's pedigree for the big moments the guys that was pedigreed for the big moments or the guys that have been in those big moments their whole life. Amari Cooper, the day he walked into Alabama, was in big moments. You understand? Dak, when he was going against Alabama and he was the only guy that was draftable on his team and beat them, that's a big moment. Zeke, when he went head up against Alabama with Ohio State, that's a big moment. So that's why your smarter and your better coaches still go and try to win games with your dogs first. Not with the Kellen Moors. Not these, what the playmaker said, so-called boy geniuses. The only, I'm being real, y'all. The ray of hope that we have, the real ray of hope that we have is the fact that we are having some very smart, accomplished guys calling this stuff out. That's the only really, but it, I'm telling you, I'm not hopeful. I'm not hopeful because see, Jerry came out there and put the focus on Mike McCarthy and he put the focus on on Cooper after three Hall of Famers pointed directly at Moore. After three Hall of Famers called Kelly Moore out by name. The playmaker literally said, I put this and Dak on Kellen Moore. The film breakdown, oh man, this is frustrating. The, the film breakdown that Kurt Warner did was exposing that the route concepts was making it hard on Dak because they was running vertical routes into cover four instead of dinking and dunking all the way downfield. Now, everybody heard me say the key to being San, beating San Fran is going to be to attack them in 12 personnel and your guys, that's the most intuitive at finding those soft spots in the zone. San Fran ran zone 70% of the time. And we went mostly with 11 personnel and a receiver crew that does not find and have that intuition built in with that. So you got a podcaster that's able to see it, and this guy that y'all calling genius don't see it. He was running guys into cover four. He was running those routes in to the teeth of the defense that it was designed to take it away. 
I'm not lying. I'm not making none of this up. I'm not making none of this up. But the only thing I'm highlighting as we break down the Jerry Jones interview, the only thing I'm highlighting is that, that there are some rays of hope. There are some. Because you got guys that won him Super Bowls that's saying what I'm saying. Much bigger names than me. Their names are three million times bigger than me. Their, their, their impact is three million, 10 million zillion times way more effective than me. They both should have the right to be able to go call Jerry directly and say this. Because Aikman said the same thing. He said this. He said, I hate going back to when I was playing because nobody cares. But when I see around the league, it's not just Dallas. I've seen it with a lot of teams. A lot of these offenses want to scheme things. That's exactly what the playmaker said. That's exactly what I said on the third. I said, we dealing with a simple situation where Kellen Moore is literally putting his damn scheme over playmakers and he got the support of jerry because it's capitalism yeah it's capitalism if i can get this vision to work i ain't gotta pay a guy 20 million dollars yeah if i can get this receiver by committee to work i ain't gotta i can i can put 20 million back in my pocket and i ain't gotta watch this guy jump out his ferrari but yeah, you, you you gambled, and when you took that gamble, you got hit in your mouth. Yeah, you bet on the boy Wonder. And guess what the boy Wonder did with his system? He not only didn't give a mark, no, he gave Cooper the targets the last two games, but CD Lamb didn't get the targets. And Pollard didn't get the touches. Yeah, that's because Aikman them right. Aikman them is sounding the alarm. Yeah, all you teams that like these systems and those bar wonders, Aikman called it so-called bar wonders. I think I know exactly who he was talking about. And, and it's amazing. Jerry, you can't tell me you did not hear that from the Hall of Famers. That's why my thumbnail looked the way that it looks. I ain't hearing it. That's why my thumbnail looks the way that it looks. I'm over here shaking my head. I'm over here holding my head in disgust that literally three Hall of Famers came out and pointed directly at Kelly Moore, and you came out and you pointed your finger at Cooper and Mike McCarthy. I do gotta say this though. I'm not too mad at what he said about Mike McCarthy though. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm not mad at everything Jerry did in that interview. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I could have had a bipolar boss cap on this. I could have had a thumbnail look like this on some of that, what he said too, on the thumbnail. <laughs> Cause some of what he said was like Jerry. Cause see, Jerry mad is not bad though. I want y'all to hear me out. <laughs> the boys laughing. I'm dead serious, though. I, I promise you, I could have made that thumbnail straight up like this. Yeah, because see, all of us, if you're trying to install fear in your organization, a boss that's angry is a good thing. If you want to take away penalties, have bosses that's no tolerance. Yep. Yeah, my boy Willie said it. Let me let me go back to this real quick. Uh, let me go back to what my boy Willie said. Good comment by my boy Willie. Yeah, hold on real quick. He basically said you plug anybody in the system and it'll work. I bet that's how he brought it up to the Jones family. Yeah, bro. That's why I called him Scott Linehan too. And when I said it on the final word, they thought I was saying... Scott Linehan, the one that was targeting Dez Bryant and Calvin Johnson. No, I'm talking about the Scott Linehan that thought he didn't need Calvin Johnson and Dez Bryant. That's who I'm talking about. And see, this is what you got to understand. The fact that the, the theory of receiver by committee was sold 
to the point they got rid of Dez. That means that theory has been actively cycling through the heads of front office for about five years, five or six years. Think about it. The fact that they had the nuts to cut Dez without a replacement in the building mean, meant that they really thought we go take Dak, we go try to treat him like Brady up in New England where New England had them, you know, average ass receivers, but they would go deep in the playoffs. And you could tell the people that actually accomplished this is New England. But see, this is the thing. A lot of teams think you go be New England by just copying the play personnel plan of New England. No, you can't be New England by copying their personnel plan. You can only be New England if you can get you a Bill, Bill Belichick to lead that personnel plan. See, because what we trying to do is we trying to shortcut. We saying, okay, I see New England, they like to budget by not paying receivers. So what we going to do is we going to do the same. But we do dumb shit like put Scott Linehan in, in charge of them and then Kellen Moore and Jason Garrett. Okay, that's why it don't work. <laughs> you feel me? Because, see, yeah, Belichick can work with less. <laughs> Belichick can work with this. Yeah, Belichick is proven. I can work with this. You giving Kellen Moore less? You giving Scott Linehan less? You giving Jason Gary less and saying that you go copy a model? No, you not going to have the same results in New England, even though you copied their personnel model. Now, Dallas, your coaches need players because you got coaches that's learning on the job it's time to call out kelly Moore for what he is he is learning on the damn job yep so i'm gonna break down one more part of that interview the mike mccarthy part because the mike mccarthy part i i ain't too mad at this man some people you know mad at this i'm not mad at jerry for this this part, I promise you, I mean it. I would thumbs up Jerry on this. And some of us got to take a back seat and do realize that Jerry does have the right to show his butt sometime because it is his team. He the one that's paying out the checks, not us. We paying with the emotion. He paying for this stuff with actual real millions. So when you lose all that opportunity, it's not just the team that you lost, it's all the investment that you made into that team that you can't recoup. So I'm not mad at Jerry's anger. Ooh, I like Jerry angry. Stay angry, just don't be crazy with your anger. Don't make rash decisions in your anger, you know? But what he said on Mike McCarthy, I want y'all to check this out. <laughs> <laughs> he said he he was talking about Mike McCarthy. I think it'd be better if I played it. I ain't gonna read it. I'ma play it because he went off. I'ma play it. Uh, it's gonna be better if I play it. Y'all give me a second to set it up because I know exactly where it is in the interview. It's at the 259 point. So I'm gonna go to 259. Y'all give me a second. I'm setting it up. I'ma get rid of it in this fashion. I want y'all to listen to him real quick. Hold on, real quick. Uh, here it is. Uh, boom. Listen. Listen. Conversations that I've had with anybody uh, relative to uh, 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 in, anything to do with the staff. I understand the interest in it, uh, but there's nothing compelling me. I've got uh, everyone under contract that I want to have under contract, and, and uh, so uh, that's where we are. Only at the extent that some of these other clubs under our rules have a right to talk to somebody, do I even have to address that? Uh, you spend a lot of time. Now, let me be real clear. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the pet peeves I have oh. is that I don't like this, well, we've got to work on this in the off season. We've got to work on this. Uh, but I don't go for that. I've been trying. All right, so remember, I was talking about active listening. At the very beginning of that question, which I didn't play, they asked him, did he have a conversation with Mike McCarthy about his future? So, so now, he's still talking about Mike McCarthy when he say, this is what I don't like. So this is direct, direct. Ooh, 
Jerry unloaded the clip. Y'all listen to this. And to push that, uh, I want those things recognized and addressed after we play Tampa. Preach. After the first game. I'm mad after at that, we Jerry. play the sixth game. Yes. I don't want to wait until we're sitting here yeah. uh, with no season left to address ah. these things we're doing Preach. or not doing. Ah. And so uh, all of that's in the mix here and, and a part of what I do. But uh, that's the way. Oh, man, I'm doing too much. I'd have cut it off. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I do. As you know, the uh, ultimate decision on these coaches or in anywhere around here is uh, uh, one that I have to make. And so the uh, guy that you got to be uh, – not got to be you don't have to that you're the toughest on should be the one in the mirror he's the one that uh, uh, d uh, that has the uh, ultimate responsibility and consequently i get to operate at that guy's timeline oh see let me pause that because see that sounded like he did talk about looking at himself in the mirror you gotta that's why i say you gotta exercise active listening you can't do passive listening you have to do active listening you got to listen to literally every word that said because he said it starts with the guy in the mirror but then listen to the point where he said consequently listen a guy that you got to be uh not got to be you don't have to that you're the toughest on should be the one in the mirror he's the one that uh, uh that has the uh, ultimate responsibility and consequently, I get to operate at that guy's timeline. And that guy's... Uh... That's what lets you know that Jerry hasn't changed. Because he was talking about looking in the mirror in terms of, I operate on my timeline. That's what lets you know that he's unchanged. Because, see, when most of us talk about looking in the mirror, we're talking about accountability. He was saying looking in the mirror on basically I'd make these decisions when I want to. He was flexing. It wasn't humility. He was flexing. That's why he quickly said after he talked about in the mirror, I make these decisions in my timeline. That's not humility, guys. Uh, displaying of information and I'm not trying to be anyway it's just yes, not in our best interest yes you are yes you are trying to be in. yes you are but I'm cool with it to talk about where we are with members of the staff right now we've got 29 coaches uh, almost three coaches for every person on the field uh, uh, so I've got a lot to think about regarding these coaches Jerry when it now it's one part that he talked in this interview that makes me have about 5% hope against Kelly Moore, okay? Because, that you know, listen, you know, whenever I do my reaction videos, y'all already know I'm going to really, really try to go in depth with this stuff. Y'all should know me by now. Y'all know how I roll. Y'all know i am a measurer of it's a big thing for boss cowboy to actually say publicly that he drunk kool-aid listen mm. i do not drink kool-aid without first measuring so there's a point of this interview that does make me think there is a slight chance that more can get up out of here because it is a lot of momentum that's coming from a lot of different places. We talked about it coming from Aikman. We talked about it coming from Kurt. We talked about it coming from um, the Playmaker. So we, we, we talking about two people that directly knows Jerry personally that earned him his first rings, pointing at Kellen. We, Sean and RJ are in the mornings. Oh yeah. They on Kellen head. They could do a better job, but for the most part, yeah, they doing pretty good. Brian Broaddus, boo, 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 busting at Kellen. The podcast community, yoga, fire. Oh, you ain't got yoga, to worry about us. Flame. We doing our part. <laughs> so it's enough momentum that should push a regional person, a region, a reasonable person over the edge. It's enough evidence. Now I can see if old boss cowboy was just saying it on the YouTube channel, like I was on January 3rd and December 24th. 
No, it's way more than that now. It's way more than that. It's articles from professional writers. It's the whole podcast community. It's a whole lot of people that's ramping up the yoga flames against Oki Boy, against the Trojan horse. Yoga fire. Burn that yoga dude down. Flame. Yeah, it's heating up. So I did, as I was listening to this interview, hear just an indication that there's potential hope in Jerry coming to his senses that this receiver by committee philosophy is ass backwards. So let's listen to it. I'm gonna break it down. Y'all tell me if I'm crazy. Y'all tell me if I'm a clown. Listen. When it comes to uh, Kellen Moore, the offensive coordinator, just listening to people way smarter than I am, Kurt Warner, Troy Aikman, Brian Broaddus, people like that, it seemed like there was a kind of defense that they would play against the Dallas Cowboys. Man, that question so off target. See, that's why I said they needed Sean and RJ. When the defense... Man, like this, that question should have been, listen, um, Jerry Jones, you know, speaking on Kellen Moore, um, the playmaker actually made a direct comment on systems versus receivers. And it's a lot of ground swelling against Kellen Moore. What's your thoughts on Kellen Moore's future? God damn, you talking, man, that's, these is the wrong dudes. I swear to God to interview, man. We needed Sean and RJ, or we needed Brian Broaddus, and we needed Jeff Kavanaugh. That's who we needed, bro. We didn't need the B-team journalists on this one, bro. You was talking to an A-team guy in Jerry Jones, and it was a B-team journalist doing it. Lightweight ass. I mean, I don't mean to talk bad against them guys because they doing their job, man. I, I'm just in my emotions, bro. And it just, it just, you know, sometimes you don't want to waste opportunities. You know what I mean? This is an opportunity to shed light on what's going on. And you got guys and other them like y'all just thought about them questions 15 minutes before he called in. God damn, man. Can you, um, excuse me, man. I, I keep getting in my feelings, but damn. Excuse me, man somewhat after that Denver Bronco game and I know it's not as simple as to say that but did you feel that your offense led by your offensive oh coordinator God. struggled to adjust to a certain type of defense that started getting played against your offense I don't I can't narrow it that simple yeah it's not that simple Jerry from the kill uh, it is simple uh, to th uh, you, when you uh, if you can't run to throw the ball it is I simple I uh, see. Man. That's what lets you know that that's Kellen Moore influence. Because if you listen to most of us, damn, I wish I had my run the damn bat hat on. Most of us been like, we need to commit to the run. His philosophy is if the run ain't working, then you need to pass. I'm telling you, the OC hit that dead on the head. Y'all better start listening to OC when he on his straight business mode. <laughs> Oh, it is that simple. See, that's why he's buying into this system over player stuff. Because he, Kelly Moore over there telling him with his genius look, he got a genius look. He looking at him like this. He, he, he got that look like, I'm genius. I'm genius. So, Jerry, so it really is that simple. I'm going to aggressively attack what the defense gives me. And to Jerry, that sounds smart. He betting on Oki versus betting on the dogs. He betting on okie dokie guy. Let me keep going. If they got you stopped running and it overloaded you and uh, got an edge with you with uh, three men up, uh, my my coach I had in college was a management major, Frank <laughs> Broth, and it was all about math. About and it was all about getting three on two, two on one, See, four on three. Talk. It's See, all about math. Talk. That system talk. This is system talk. Let me go back to my thumbnail because that's how I feel right now. That's system talk. It's just three on one. So when you see, when you see CD Lamb don't get his targets, remember it's just mad. <laughs> Sometimes to keep him crying, you gotta laugh. It's just mad. <laughs> oh man, I done got so hyped, my ring come off my finger. 
<laughs> yeah, man, it's just math. So then you look at the San Fran game and everybody will say, what happened to the touches of Pollard? It was the math. <laughs> I just got to cry, y'all. Let me. <sighs> oh my lord oh oh man sound the alarm sound the alarm we got us a we got us a trojan horse in the building that's affecting our owner and the people that want to win like him <laughs> are telling you the truth we like jerry we love you get rid of kellen moore <laughs> It's that system talk, and he's showing, even in his interview, that he still believes it. Keep listening. And uh, so the point is that uh, we've, uh, you can look at it from a lot of different angles. Uh, the facts are that uh, uh, we uh, have, uh, should have, and our fans deserve that, we should have uh, with the squad that we put together, and it was an outstanding group. Those free agents, those one- and two-year free agents that we added in here were an outstanding group of players. And they really were contributors and could have contributed more. We had outstanding receivers. And there are people playing with a lot less in the offensive line than we are in the NFL. And so we've got to step up here and uh, analyze uh, uh, how we're going to approach it. This is all good to look back. Nothing Nothing wrong with living in the past and looking back a little bit. Jerry, right on that. Because I am seeing some people like my boy D-Block88, the big homie. Um, D-Block said, this is real. He said, boss, that game broke my damn heart. Yeah. But D-Block, it's a blessing in that game. Because guess what? If we would have won that game and then won another game, the dysfunctions would have remained and still it would have eventually got us. But because we lost the way that we lost, when we lost, it's made us all put laser focus and our voices on the real problems. We got the OC back in the building. Oh, y'all in trouble? Y'all in, yes, tr in trouble? Y'all in trouble, man. Man. Yo got fire. We got the big dog Yo back in the building. Lame. Straight um, business. So... Uh, let me see. We got us a question. He said, boss, do you think we bring in those free agents back that Jerry's referring to? Uh, Cooper, they don't want to bring him back. They don't want to bring him back. But the issue is now the ground is not broken like it was when I say broken, whenever you're trying to plant seeds, the first thing you got to do is break up the ground. You got to prepare the seed to go in the ground. So the ground was broken to get rid of T.O. It was easy to call him a distraction. The ground was broken to get rid of Dez. It was easy to call him a distraction. You dealing with a killer with, with Cooper. You dealing with a smart chess player and a cerebral man. He's not your typical receiver we all should pray every day that we got cooper because he is not that type to the point he said today about 30 minutes ago i really want to be a dallas cowboy played it perfect oc <laughs> go ahead dog right. i know you want to go with that go dog go <laughs> because here's the thing man and i said this <laughs> when you showed the first clip from earlier in the year it's that He's not a diva. He's nope. not a troublemaker. Nope. He's a team player. He's an nope. ultra smart guy, yep. right? He, he's politically correct yep. in his statements. So you can't find offense against him. He's he 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 look he, he he's like he's like certain corporate giants where you you looking for dirt, you're looking for something that you can find, and you can't find nothing, and you're mad. You're mad because you don't want to pay him, but you can't find nothing to say about him. And let's talk about the economics of this, Boss Cowboy, which is what we have not done. His 2022 salary at this point is guaranteed. He had a $100 million contract, has a $100 million contract. He had a $10 million signing bonus. He got $10 million when he signed. He got $20 million this year. 
He's guaranteed his 20 now. So the Cowboys, you're out $60 million. You're willing to eat $60 million to cut a man who asks for the ball, who rightfully deserved the ball. Is that what you're saying to me? That might be what they say. You gonna eat the 60? You gonna eat the 60 million? You gotta pay him the 60 million if you cut him, if he gets traded, if he gets signed somewhere else, you gotta pay him that other 20 for this 2022 season. So you gonna eat that 20? That's nonsense. Listen, target this man like a true number one, okay? And forget about all the shenanigans and all the bull sugar. And let's just try to go and get six. That's what we need to do. I mean, I want six, boss. I mean, that's what we're doing this. I want six. Best and that's the man whole reason why we doing all six, this breakdown. Both of them. We want six, and the best man and playing the best man is what bring us six, no doubt. So check this out. We just got a question, though, see. They said he said that 30 minutes ago. Actually, he said it yesterday. I just saw it 30 minutes ago. I'm sorry. But look at how my boy Amari is playing this. Cowboys Amari Amar Cooper wants to remain with the club in 2022. You know what I'm saying? See, he know how to position himself against the Wolves. <laughs> yeah. He played it perfect. Yo got fire. See, because if he was dumb, he would have came out and snapped back at Jerry. Then he would have got the diva label. But you know, cowboy fans, we want, we love to hear, I want to be a cowboy for the rest of my life. And we'd be like, oh, I like Cooper. Well, this is what you got to understand. <laughs> See, the, and I know some things. Well, I can't say the things that I know fully. I'll have to do that on a later show. But like certain people in our locker room, I compare them to a person, and you'll really respect this, mm -hmm. who just got a contract extension quietly before the end of the season. Wasn't oh, it Anthony Z. Brown? No, Anthony Brown. Oh, Anthony Brown yeah, got a yeah. three year around 15 yeah. million. You got right? fire. Yeah. You got so, claim. What did what did Anthony Brown always say? Even when he was playing bad, even when everybody wanted to run him out of town, this was my dream. I wanted to be a cowboy. I want to be a cowboy. I dream. I, I dreamed about this since I was a little boy. I mean, it was my heart and my soul. I just cried and cried and cried when you drafted me. I just, I just love it. My family, my friends, my dad, aunties, my dad, grandpapa from three generations all said, "You're gonna be a cowboy." I love the cowboys. Oh, <laughs> and so because of that, because of that, he he's the cat. That's had 15 lives. And look, this Ooh, year he played so his way. Right. So no shade on him at all. He played great this he year. Did. He played he his did. way. No okay? shade. He played, no. he played his way. He showed but it. you're going to reject the pretty girl that wants you. Nobody does that. I mean, Ooh. not if she's like a, a, a 10. Like, in terms of wide receivers, Amari Cooper is a dime piece. He's a 10. Yes. So you're going to reject the 10? You're rejecting oh. the dime piece and say, I want you? Oh, Everybody's going to call you a fool. And now your hands are tied. Just like the OC said, he played his cards right, and he's go it's going to be very hard to move him. Oh, hey, we got somebody. Check this out. I like this comment. She said, what up, Boss Cowboy? Finally caught you guys live, man. That's, I like that. Yeah, you got us. So, Salute. Well, yeah, we going to tell you, too, man. You better follow us everywhere, too. Follow us on Facebook too, because I don't know why. Sometimes YouTube, sometimes these notifications don't work the same. I don't know why. I don't think they out for us. I ain't one of those type of weirdos. You know what I'm saying? Well, let, well, let me say something real quick, Boss Cowboy. If you do this, everybody that's watching the screen, if you like, you share, and you subscribe, and you turn on your bell notification icons, all right? And you won't miss the latest and greatest in Cowboys content and news. You got to turn on that little bell, that bell notification icon. Then that way, you'll always get a notification every time we go live. Right. Yeah. And uh, we still got some bonus content coming because we're going to talk about that Charles Haley. I know you're going to go off on that, big dog. All right. Hold on real quick because we was we was breaking down Jerry when you came in, bro. We was breaking down this interview. Uh, I'm going to come back to that. Let's get back into that. Uh, and then also, all new subscribers, please make sure y'all do this. Go to um, and put... Uh, you know, post 
after the show that you're a new subscriber so that the OC and I can address you. We always want to address our new subscribers. We've been having great growth over the last week and a half, man. We have over 300, maybe even 400 subs. Uh, you know, that's a lot of growth. If we keep growing like that, it's go. That's that's scary growth, man. It's like, goddamn, what are we gonna be in the next two years if we stay on that? And we gonna be better than that, be honest, be honest. But um, let's go back to Jerry, big dog. I, I want to break this down with you, real quick, uh, cause we was breaking down this interview. We had the last part, and and to catch you up, OC, I was saying I'm seeing a potential window of hope that the momentum can build to get Kelly Moore out of here. But check this out. Listen. Nothing counts but uh, this morning, this afternoon, and the next weeks ahead. And so uh, we're going to do something about it. If I thought mm. changing out men mm. at any level would improve mm. us, I would change it out. Uh, I've looked uh, looked around. I see a lot of names, a lot of great names, a lot of great names from colleges, a lot of great names. I see them coming through. I've seen a lot of great names at uh, various duties in the NFL come and go over the last 30 years. You got fire. Okay, I haven't seen but a couple of them that I thought might have a straight shot into what's up above. That's Belichick up there in uh, New England. His record has been unbelievable, but... Uh, Aside from that, I'll be very candid with you. I see human beings, human is human uh, work ethic, human excelling, and coming up with a way to go. Uh, bottom line is, yes, I'm very, very frustrated and upset that we've, uh, co you can call it COVID, you can call it anything, but we have used up some very talented players over the last few years. Oh... The now, OC remember, said it first. Hold on, hold on. I'm oh, real sorry. Quick, OC. Oh, real quick, because I want to just bring everybody to the context. So just real quick, just real quick, OC, then you got yeah. it. Because the OC is a consultant. He's also got a background in sales. I was telling them I got a background in sales. And one of the things that you got to have to be a really good salesperson, you got to be an active listener. You got to be able to hear context, and you got to be able to recognize context even when people get wordy or verbal, so however you say it. Whenever it happened, you still got to be able to catch what was the context. Remember, the question led off with who? Kellen Moore. So he led that question off about Kellen Moore, even though the, the question was clumsy. It was sloppy. It was not laser focused. It was very rookie-ish by that media crew that day. They usually do real good, but they dropped the ball that day. But it was still about Kelly Moore. And so the fact that he said of his own volition, the fact that he said, I'm not <laughs> a tripping on getting rid of anybody on any level if I think it improves this team. That's that small window that gives me hope that Jerry is hearing this noise and considering it with Kelly Moore. What's your thoughts, OC? The OC said it first, man. I told you guys, hashtag straight business. Because I told you, I said the hope that the Cowboys have, and me and you talked about this, Boss Cowboy, is that Jerry Jones is very, very acquainted at this age and stage of his life with his own mortality. And that in itself will give the Cowboys hope. Mike Evans, thanks for the super chat. We appreciate you. Now, listen. Jerry Jones said something very, very, very fine detail that we want to be sure we capture, Boss Cowboy. He said over these last two years, over these last mm. two seasons, that we wasted up some precious resources with players. Well, who's been here the last two years? Mike McCarthy. And he said, uh, you can say COVID or what have you. He's saying, I don't care about your excuses. I don't care if it was COVID. I want results. I want results right now. And I am going to go and get somebody that will give it to me. Nobody here is unexpendable. Everyone here is expendable. He named the only person he thought might be unexpendable was Bill Belichick. So yeah. he said, hey, everybody here is expendable. I've seen bodies and people come and go over the last 30 years. And you go give me some results. Or I'm going to get some people in here that will. 
So let everybody be on notice. If you got a job with the Cowboys, like you said a couple shows ago, hey, I don't care if it's off season. You better be up there at 5 a.m. You better mm -hmm. at least act like you're busy, act like you're doing something, sweep the floor, go jog, go lift some weights, watch some film, put together some projection for draft picks. You better be up there doing something. Mm -hmm. Jerry ain't playing right now. Uh, let's take this comment before we take the last topic. Okay, we're going to talk about Charles Haley in this offensive line as a bonus topic. That wasn't the topic we was going to discuss, but we go throw that in there as bonus. We promise y'all we was going to talk about that for everybody who stayed to the end. Trust me, we got a, uh, the OC's perspective is somebody you're going to want to get on this one, especially with that offensive line. But I want to address this comment real quick and just kind of go back and forth with you on this. He said, week one through six, everybody loved Wonder Boy. Now y'all ready to run him out. And he laughed. Um, I'll start with the thought unless you want to start with the thought. You want to start that thought? I'm going to give it to you first, boss. Go ahead. Okay. i say this. Um, true. That's true. I did like the one, the boy, one through six. I did. Um, and one of the wisest comments I heard came from Skywalker where he says, today's price is not yesterday's price. So, you know, Skywalker is really gifted at being able to take complicated things and simplify it into a bumper sticker. So that's a bumper sticker statement that's basically saying we all have to give ourselves room to change. And so because anybody was in love with Kelly Moore week through six doesn't mean you can't get new revelation on him week seven through 17. So I'm going to say in my case, I definitely got new revelation on him. New revelation. The revelation came to me after Arizona game, and it actually came from his own mouth. And that's when I started seeing that he was a clone of the philosophy of Scott Linehan with the receiver by committee. So, yes, I did it with, and I went from loving him to now I would be the first to kick him right in his ass out the door because we need to get rid of that Jason Garrett <laughs> smell. It's a smell of Jason Garrett and all of y'all know that smell. It's the smell of politics. It's the smell of corporate America. It's the smell of elitism versus what's best for this team. So I'm unashamed to say, yeah, I changed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> Here, here, here's the here's the the balance of the comment and great comment. Thanks for the great comment, comment, by the way. Yeah, you know, great comment. the season is not six games, and we can't judge a third of the book and disregard the rest of the entire book. Right. So six games is only one third of the season. So he started well, but it's about finishing strong. The Super Bowl is played in February, not in not in October. Mm -hmm. So I can love you. I can love you in October, but I can hate you by the time we get to December. <laughs> so that that that's, that's the nature of the beast. Yeah. This is the NFL. And Super. Jerry Glanville said it means not for long. And he was exactly right. So you have to show consistency. And the difference between the first six games and the back half of the season is simply this. We abandon common sense play calls. We abandon the run game in key situations. And we also abandon, abandon targeting Amari Cooper when we should have in critical moments in football games. All of which we did on third and long, on second, on second and medium, during the first six games of the year. Oh, and by the way, mm -hmm. we also started Terrence Steele. That's a whole different story. No, we're going to talk about that <laughs> big but, dog. But, but, but that was the key to the run, running game success. That was the whole key to the running game success. And we benched him because we have politics and favorites. And so, yeah, of course, man. You, we liked him, man, of course. But guess what? That's like the rookie jinx. You know how you have, you've seen quarterbacks come out or players come out, Boss Cowboy, and they take the league by storm? That's because nobody got tape on you. 
See, nobody had tape on the Cowboys and how Kellen Moore called his offense the first six games. Nobody had tape. But Yoga when we fire. get almost halfway Yoga through the season, rain. guess what? Everybody starts to get tape. Everybody starts to have a recipe. Everybody starts to have a counter. And guess what? If you're not good enough as a play caller or coordinator to have a counter, a deviation, or a wrinkle to their counter, guess what? Your offense is going to get stopped in its tracks. And I don't care how many talented players you have. And that's exactly what happened with the Cowboys, what being a play caller versus a offensive coordinator game strategist. And that's Yoga what you need. You need a game strategist. Uh, this is checkers and this ain't chess. Uh, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. Listen. Hashtag straight business. <laughs> OC, man. I like this new OC, man. This new OC. Yoga fire. Ooh, man. Yoga listen, claim. Listen, I want, man. Oh, man. OC. Boy, look. And listen. the truth, hey, and the truth is going to set you free. And you know what? That's the truth of the matter. That's the uh, truth of the matter. All right. See, listen. Woo-hoo. Oh man, these comments taking over the show, bro. We got a, we got two fire comments I want to address with you, big dog. Cause I was gonna get to our last topic, but these are fire coming. No, we got, we got to, we got to. I got about twenty minutes. All right, Just perfect, like, you know. perfect. That that's enough time. Check this out. Two good cupboards, one with a super chat. Uh, K. Hay said, "Boss, how do you get rid of the Gary smell if the head coach said that they would keep the same office if Kellen Moore departure?" Good question. I can't wait to answer that. And then this came from B Bird, where he said, "I hooped real." I hoped real good games and pick up basketball. Oh, I hooped real good games and pick up basketball until people realize that I ain't got no left hand. That's what the OC was just talking about. Kelly Moore ain't got no left. Kelly Moore ain't got no left. You know what I'm saying? And people don't figure it about. You know what I'm saying? So, but going back to that first question, going back to that first question, man, to how do we, um, he said, basically, how do we get rid of the Jason Garrett if they say they go keep the same offense if they if Kelly Moore was to leave? Listen, the problem, in my opinion, and then OC, I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this. The problem, in my opinion, is not even just Kelly Moore as the play caller or the system. It's the unsullied of Mike McCarthy, which makes him powerless to be able to make the changes he wants to see. And the split in your locker room that it causes. Because Mike McCarthy was right. When we get into the playoffs, those wins or losses can usually be broken down to one or two plays. So that means you got to have an environment that's greedy for all games. We got the talent. We got to get rid of the things that can flip those two to three plays. And that's how you can get rid of Kelly Moore and still get rid of the stench of Jason Garrett. Because the stench of Jason Garrett was the divide of power that it had allowed your leaders to be viewed as real leaders. Yeah, um, that I, I could be very, very complex with this answer. And so I'm just going to simplify it. You can keep the same system and you, you can use nuances as it relates to that system. You can run trips and run a flood concept versus running three receivers into three different zones so they could be easily covered, right? You can do that. So it just all depends on how you construct your plays within that system. So you can have the same system and the offense looks very, very different. Yeah. Yeah. It's one last thing about Kellen that I want to say before we get into um, our last topic. You know what a lot of people are not saying? That to me has become obvious now. What's Kellen that? more chokes in big moments. Yeah. He has brain farts. Yeah. He has, he has brain farts. I just wanted to say that real quick because a lot of people kind of ignoring that. 
The pattern is showing when it get hot, his play calling get real dumb. But he'll yeah. kill you when he ahead of you. You know what I mean? When he get comfortable and the crowd and everything behind him and he hearing the coop chant, oh yeah, he'll dial up some stuff. But he don't have the composure to be a play caller. Just to be honest. You gotta be very cool under pressure. You gotta have a you gotta be able to settle, in my opinion. Um last topic. I can't wait to talk about this one. This was this one. Ooh, this came out the blue. Can somebody get rid of the freaky, freaky stuff that's coming in? One of those spammers came in with that that weird old stuff. Um, all right. But Charles Haley said, hashtag Cowboys coaches. You can have a running game. You can't have a running game when you ain't got offensive linemen to block for you. And they knew that going into the game. If they didn't know that that left guard and center suck, then they were blind. I think we just lost the OC. He'll be back. Oh, man. All right. So I want to talk about that. Because that's another thing I was definitely sounding the alarm on. Okay? Before the game. Not after the game. Before the game. Way before the game. Big game James too. Sounding the alarm loud. Sadly, mostly alone. In terms of the podcast community. Mostly alone. Big game James and myself was bullseye on the offensive line as an issue. It was, we weren't talking about, oh, yeah, it's going to be okay. And this ain't about, I was right, because I can't stand those type of people to work. I was right. I was right. No, man. it's it. The, no, I'm not excited to be right that we got slapped. I don't feel good about that. But I can definitely show you. And I put this on my Twitter. I said, so the Dallas Cowboys fans slash media, this was January night before the game. I said, so the Dallas Cowboys fans media will be silent on their offensive line problems going into the postseason. Because I've been telling everybody, I've been saying it, that it was a lot of debating on this offensive line to me that was not done in good faith it wasn't done straight up a lot of people got the fans a lot of us got divided and we start picking favorites versus looking at the truth i was showing everybody for weeks that our running success was coming off running off that right side when steel was playing right tackle I, be, I was showing people for weeks, like, listen, y'all, everybody's saying this how to fix the running game. Because remember, this is what was stated. What was stated was, well, the running game broke down when y'all took out Connor Williams from McGovern. Well, why the hell did the running game just not take off like a rocket when y'all inserted them back in? Because he never was the real engine of the running game. And he was treated totally different than the fans and some podcasters treated Lyle Collins. Because with Lyle Collins, everybody was patient. They let him stink it up when he got back. They let him stink it up, but they was like, Wait, just wait. Y'all got to let him get in mid-season form. But McGovern played one game. Sit him. Sit him. Oh, he can't develop? He can't develop? So y'all go sit up there and y'all go be... See, everybody... Oh, I'll take those penalties. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when that 30-yard game got wiped out 
by another Connor Williams penalty? Did you take it then? Because that's what you lobbied for. That's what you asked for. That's what you begged for. So it's one of those things. That's why I said it's a lesson for all of us to learn. It's a it's a lesson for all of us to learn. It's as fans, the media, podcasters, we all got to do self-reflection, including myself, all of us. And I'm going to be honest. See, listen, I'm going to be so transparent with y'all, man. See, because that's the only way to be. I got to try to lead this by example. There's pressure when you're a podcaster to be right in the public. Okay? There's pressure. We all feel it too. And it can create temptation to speak false just to try to be right. I've done it. I'm going to confess on myself. I'm going to tell you when I did it. I repent of it now. I'm admitting it openly. I'm ashamed of it. I actually did it twice. I did it first time with... Um, I did it the first time with Nashawn Wright. That was the first time I did it. I'm going to be honest. I wrote a whole book called The Boss Cowboy God. I do it every year where I talk about the draft candidates, the free agents, and ways to improve the Cal Cowboys. And we drafted Nashawn Wright. Listen, I'm being honest. I'm being transparent. I'm going to own this because I was fake at a moment. Okay. So I'm owning this publicly. I didn't know who the hell Nashawn was when we drafted him. But if you go watch the show, I still gave commentary on him because I felt the pressure to know about him, especially having a book. And after I did that, I said, man, you can't never do that, bro. Just next time, just admit you don't know who the dude is. You didn't have to lie to kick it. And I did. Because it's the pressure of being a public podcaster and so-called having an answer for everything. And I made a vow. I say, you not going to ever have an answer for everything, boss. Next time, just admit. And that's what I'm going to do going forward. I don't never want to get caught up in my pride to where I'm out here trying to fake it to kick it. Just because I got a mic and I got people that support this channel. The second time I was that I fell for the temptation of having a public press as a podcaster. So before I'm calling out people, I'm telling y'all we've all done this and we all understand the pressure of this. And I'm admitting that I've done it. The second time I did it, OC. The second time I did it was when Lyell uh, and the Steel debate was first started. And I was saying over and over, yeah, Lyell's a better right tackle. I kept saying it. I kept saying it. But then, after the OC and I was doing our research, I said, oh, boss, you wrong. That time, I quickly went immediately to the channel and the people that had followed us, and I admitted it. I said, man, I told y'all wrong, and I apologize. So, I'm not pointing the fingers like I haven't done it myself. I'm saying we all need to do self-reflection out of this season, just like we asking Jerry to do. All of us. Because the OC and I was saying that, but I'm telling you, a lot of people got caught in that pride. I'm telling you. We was telling y'all about Connor Williams. We was telling y'all about Lyell. We, we was telling y'all early Move Lyle to left guard for the playoffs. We were saying that, yes, we expect it to be bumpy in the beginning, but we want him to settle in so we can have talent on talent by the time it count in the postseason. So when I see Charles Haley come out and just talk, just blunt, all these Hall of Famers, man, they just telling you straight up. Straight up. He said, the left side guard and center suck. 
there is nobody that got better eyes and the right to make that opinion over Charles Haley. Nobody. Because he was one of the one few linemen and one of the first to truly play all over the line of scrimmage. I trust that he know what he's talking about. Well, the great Charles Haley is Hall of Famer, Go Jacker guy. He's a legend, and he knows the game of football. And it will be really um, far be it for me to say otherwise, besides the fact that, yeah, this year, Charles Haley is right. He's right. And I'm going to take it a step further. Not only could you have moved Lyell to left guard, you could have left Connor McGovern playing left guard. You see, some people say that he sucked, and I see a few bad plays when I cut on the tape. But I don't see a guy that ever got overpowered. I don't see a guy that couldn't adequately get the blocks, when, even when I looked at Connor McGovern. So if you look at both of these guys side by side, the tragedy about what happened this year, I understand leaving Batty as the center because uh, we didn't have time. Uh, we just got to ride it out. This is his first full year playing. I can get that logically. But the left guard position where it was struggles, you had a two-way go. You could have moved Lael Collins there. You could have also kept and developed, continued to develop Connor McGovern from the left guard position. You did neither. You did neither. So that is the microcosm, just one of a series of bad decisions that end up costing a fo football game for the Cowboys versus San Francisco and caused a first round exit. So that's how I'll see you, Boss Cowboy. Yeah, and I think, you know, just straight up, the next time we having debates, all our debates need to be done in good faith. Not who, who the favorite, who your pet cat, Cause that's that's a lot of what's going on. We lost a we lost some subs. We lost some subs because we was we was telling the truth, Doc. <laughs> it's some people. I don't see the Reaper. I ain't seen the Reaper in weeks. Then he come back. You say y'all still talking about steel? It's like, bro, we actually ain't talking about steel in four weeks. But to him, that's all y'all talking about is steel. Well, that's the biggest problem. That's the biggest problem right now, big dog. So, yeah, we got some people that ain't even been back to the channel because they still in love with Lyle. And that's okay. Listen, no, that's let me say okay, something. That's okay. That is not no, okay, no, bro. No, listen. It, it, it is. It is. It is. I'm going to give you a chance. You might be able to talk me into it, but hell oh, it no. Is. It is. Listen. Listen. Listen for your leap. I know you're feeling froggy. I know, bro. Hold on. One more. One more shoe, man. Go ahead, you're big dog. Feel the super froggy. <laughs> man. So look, it, it's okay. It's okay to say you like a player. Oh, and that okay. man, I like I that guy. I, I, I like him you. as a player. I leaped yeah, on you. I did. Froggy, my bad. Right? My super bad, froggy. Bro. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, straight up. It's okay. <laughs> You can have a favorite player, but you can't have a favorite player to the demise of your team. Yeah. I can be a coach. Like, okay, me, I'm okay, I'm a coach. I coach, I coach football, right? Mm -hmm. And there's some guys on my team, I like them as players. I like them as people. They're some of my favorite people. Yeah. And guess what? Uh, yeah. They don't start. Right. Because I can't start them to the demise of my team. I can you got to be able to separate and that's the problem today people don't know how to separate things yeah you see yeah. you can yeah. like a guy and not play a guy because he not ready or he gonna hurt your team right i can play the guy that's a little bit obnoxious that really is not like my favorite cup of tea right but he's gonna help my team he's gonna help us win I don't care about my personal personality differences. And let me drop some more fire on y'all because this is straight business. That's the difference between this Cowboys team and the championship Cowboy teams. Because you know what? Jerry Jones, D. 
didn't care if you wore a gold chain. He didn't care if you snorted cocaine. Mm -hmm. He didn't care if you partied. He nope. didn't care what you did. If you showed up on Sunday and you balled out, that is all he cared about. And I'm You're not, not saying you don't care to people, not but what I'm saying in the business of professional football, it is professional football. It is not professional personality. It is not, not professional fire. good guy. It is not professional model citizen. It is professional football. And so what you do in professional football is you put professional football players on the team that can run up the score and help you win the game. That is significant. Between this football team. And you got to let the organ go, the dog. Influence. And the influence, Boss Cowboy. Man, hold on, man. Influence. You got to get this timing better, bro. We got to get this production timing better, bro. When you hear that you gotta organ, you got to let it go, You got to go off me. That's you got to go off bro. me. I can't. I can't. I'm telling you, as the dude who Listen. produces. I'm telling Listen. you, bro, that organ is for effect, big dog. I got to. I want I want the Listen. people to digest what you said because you're going hard. <laughs> I'm sorry. Listen. Go ahead. No, last oh, thing. Man. Ooh. We've had we had we've had we've had the impact, I believe, of second and third generation Joneses that maybe have caused the focus not to be the focus. Right. You know, there's a there's a statement in a book. The main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. And when you take your eyes off the main thing, all of a sudden you're not as successful. And I think in part that's what's happened, man. With the favoritism and biases to your fault. Yeah. And we all got to do better. And I'm saying all. See, because I'm not even just pointing at Jerry now. Because cause right. I know we got to do better. Because if we yeah. was united to start still, and if we was united to move like L to left guard, that would have rippled like everything ripples. You know what I mean? It would have rippled right into that building. And they was getting ready to do it. We was the I was me and you was debating Big Game James live on the final word when they broke. Remember that? Cause we was yeah. we was we was fighting hard for that idea. And Big was like, mm -hmm. they not gonna do it, dog. <laughs> and I said, man, you can't say what they go do, dog. That's not our job is to try to interpret what they go do. You know what I'm saying? He said, but boss, why waste that time? And then Law started laughing. <laughs> and Law checked. He said, bro, check the breaking news. They just said that they are working like at left guard and right tackle. Because it seemed like it was unheard of when we was talking about it. You know what I'm saying? And, and my boy Big, yeah. to his credit, this is why I love my boy Big. On the spot, Big was like, my bag, boss. You know what I mean? It was no ego. He didn't agree with it, and he and he was logical on what he was saying. Like, boss, I don't think they go do it. But he put his ego down that moment. You know what I'm saying? But, because it was about yeah. the best idea. It wasn't about who was right. You're right. You're right about what you're saying. But I want to pivot pivot back on something you say. No, you're taking it too easy on, on the Joneses in the front office. And I'm not. Okay. Straight business. Because, right. no, it is their fault. It is their fault. And I'm sorry. It is their fault. Because of the fact that... The, the reason why you know why Let, let's look let's put the tea leaves all the way together you know why lyell came back working at left guard and tackle because of the play of steel yeah that was a filming decision okay let me work him in in our weak spot let me work him in at left guard and right. back up right tackle you got fire let Yoga me work him lane. in this way and he was vetoed he was systematically over a couple game period veto. So I'm not thinking he's. All right, God. God. I'm not taking it easy. Whew. Because this is hashtag, put it in the chat, hashtag straight, straight business. business. I'm uh, not taking it easy yeah. because the truth will set you free and the OC is giving you the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. So help me God, I'm telling you. That's how that went down. Oh, man. So, anyway. Uh, yeah, I know some people don't like that organ. I'm, hey, it's what it is.
You know what I'm saying? But when that man is preaching, I'm going to give it to him. I'm going to give him that organ. So I'm going to say this, man. You know, as we broke down the Jerry interview and as we broke down what Charles Haley just said, I think our short-term, our short-term future is at a dividing point. The straight business is definitely in the chat. I love it. Y'all y'all definitely straight business is showing up in the chat because it's real. Uh, so on a straight business, to speak straight business, our future is now, in my opinion, in the hands of one man. Well, two, but mainly one. We waiting on Jerry Jones to catch up to the fans. We waiting on him to catch up with the reality of who Kellen Moore is. We waiting on the Joneses to stop their meddling and truly empower the coaches. I did want to take one comment before we, I guess, um, wrap it up. Yep. This comment right here where he said, why can't we just give 49ers credit for really studying Cowboys offense and be mad at Dan Quinn for his team getting ran over. Um, let me take that one first. We give the 49ers credit. We've given them credit in about four or five shows. They've come in here, they took care of business. We showed the intensity, their calm, their emotional management versus our emotional management. Um, we talked about on the post game, go back and check out that show about their execution and they're a good football team. And you know, you're a good football team. If you can call out exactly what you need to do to stop them and they still can do it anyway, we can call out, Hey, stop Debo Samuels and you can't stop him anyway. Right. Hey, don't let don't, get the Garoppolo. Don't let him get going, passing the ball. Guess what? He did it anyway. So we talked about some of those things. No, they get all the credit in the world. It's not that it's just that talent wise talent wise and expectation wise the cowboys were so much better than the 49ers and we should not have lost that game at home and that's why you hear the outcry but it's no shade on the 49ers they won the game hey they advance and we sitting here mad about what happened last week so yeah so my answer to that and i'm not going to address anymore uh after this but you know, some people that subscribe to Boss Cowboy Sports, y'all really do got to watch our most recent shows because it's a lot of comments that sometimes made that don't reflect what we do. Because we spend a whole lot of time talking about culture. We use San Fran as the example of having a plan to get your guys loose. We showed them coming out the locker room and spent a thousand hours talking about culture using San Fran as the example. We spent a whole nother thousand hours talking about how San Fran has a culture of playing the best man. This is all within this yep. week. This ain't this ain't something yep. we said two months ago. This is stuff I actually said yesterday in terms of giving San Fran credit. You know but that's saying? cool because we're gonna get you caught up yeah we're gonna get you caught just up and just check out the other that's video. it yeah. yeah but that i'm trying to say people really need to watch our content you know what i'm saying right like i think sometimes people be in and out like you got to sit down and turn this on watch us when you can chill you know what i'm saying when you're driving in the car cut us well, off yeah when you're driving in the car because then you'll think we not giving san fran credit no man i hate san fran i hate to talk about san fran but yeah, they deserve credit. And the main things that they deserve credit on was having their guys not come out flat. Uh, and they definitely deserve credit for maximizing their culture by not having favorites like we tend to do. So yeah, they deserve credit. And sadly, in the future, I'm gonna show y'all that Jerry himself know better because Jerry talked about before he became an owner, I'm gonna go show this story. He was actually trying to become an owner and he was mentored by them guys at San Fran. And they even told him personal stories. One of the mo ma main stories that they told him, and this is why you see the San Fran culture as what it is, because they've been like this for over 50 years.
They say, and it started with Bill Walsh. Bill Walsh understood you cannot get too close to your players. And he said that because he said, eventually, the same guys that I like are the same guys I'm going to have to look in their eyes and get rid of them. And they literally told Jerry this story. He said, I have a tight end on this team. And he said, Jerry, when you buy the Cowboys, remember this. You can't get too close to your players. He said, because this guy, I've gotten real cool with him and his wife. And every day, he looks at me in my eye because he's on the bubble. And he said, and I'm going to cut that guy. But I hate that I got to do it because I, build it, I built a bond. Now, and he said, from then on, I never got too close to my players. I intentionally kept a degree of separation. So when you see San Fran playing the faith, I mean, when you see them take Alex Smith out for Kaepernick, when Alex took them to two, to two national, to two NFC championships, one game away from the Super Bowl. And did Jerry listen though? Jerry got that lesson from San Fran. Did he listen? No. He still went on all white parties with Whitney and Romo. Why do you think in 2016, when we was 13 and three, it was only one person still lobbying for Romo? Jerry. And saying weird stuff. Wouldn't it be something? He said this week 14. Wouldn't it be something? I'm not hoping nothing happens to Dak. But what if Romo somehow got back and then led us to a Super Bowl? We was literally on an 11-game winning streak, and he still was lobbying for Romo. That's because he still get to attach. So I don't know. So that's the last credit I'm going to give San Fran this year. Don't ask for it no more. I'm not giving it no more. I've said it enough. They deserved it. Now I'm going back to spitting and peeing on San Fran like I supposed to. I don't like them. All right. What's your final words, OC? Hey, man, look, this is hashtag straight business. Put it in the chat. That's all you're getting from the OC this whole off season. And uh, look, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this content. If you want more videos like this, Please support us via the cash app, dollar sign, Boss Cowboy Sports. You also can super chat us. We appreciate that. And anything that you do give goes toward the creation of more content like this. Follow us, please, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. All right. And you can follow me, the OC100, on Twitter for the latest and greatest in Cowboy Sports and news. Boss Cowboy Sports. Sarnar. And I'm Boss Cowboy Sports. You can also follow me on Twitter. We got a lot of action going on. We also have Boss Cowboy Sports on Facebook. Both the OC and I on Facebook as well. Um, and we really appreciate everybody, you know, that come in and support the stuff. And I always, always remember one of the most important ways to make your voice matter is by sharing content. That's how to make your voice matter. It's and when we build, because Boss Cowboy Sports is gonna be a hundred thousand sub group. We are. We go eventually be in the next five or six years a million sub group. Okay. So y'all gotta get in the habit now, in my opinion, to learning how to work together as a mass group. Think about it. Think about it. We need to get in the habits now to be able to move trends on social media. You can only do that with sharing. Now we go do the content. All y'all got to do is hit that share, maybe hashtag something. And what that does is that sends a vibration. It sends a vibration through all the, the Dallas Cowboys family. And as we grow and as the podcast community grow, so does your voice. So let's exercise it. Let's share this content if you really register with it. If you don't, I ain't putting no pressure on you to share. But if you just want to share the support, that's cool. But I really want people to share what they're passionate about and what we proved. Now, what we do on this show, OC, am I lying, big dog? We prove it. 
we go out our way to show it we don't just talk about it we show it you know and when you got people right. that's giving you the references showing it to you going breaking down jerry's comment line by line mixing it with what kellen said mixing it with what you know the other facts that came out mixing it what cooper said when you getting people that's putting in that type of work that's all we really need from the whole cowboy family is just to share so finally we always say this because this is the spirit of this channel we always striving to be loyal never devoted we went through some fights this year because we was being loyal and we wasn't being devoted. We was telling the truth on those things that would have helped us in the playoffs, like steal at right tackle, like Lyle to guard, and other ideas that we had. So stay with Boss Cowboy Sports, grow with Boss Cowboy Sports, and we always appreciate everybody because y'all voice really do matter especially when you actually use your voice y'all stay up peace B -b 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 boss cowboy sports where your voice matters Sports.